Do you need a water filtration system to fix that nasty lake water for your family? Not sure where to start? Want some advice from the pros? Check this out. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Today I'm being joined by Heidi from our customer service team. She's going to help me share with you what you should be looking for when you're thinking about investing in a water filtration system for your lake water for your family. By the end of this video, you'll know what to look for, what type you'll need, where to find it, and what you should definitely avoid. So as an overview of what a lake water filtration system looks like, this infographic will definitely help explain it. So as the water comes from the lake, it's going to go through your pressure tank and then there's going to be some pre-filtration to get rid of the dirt from the water then it's going to go through a tannin filter if you have color in your water being caused by tannins then an ultraviolet disinfection system and then a reverse osmosis drinking water system so you've got great super pure potable water for your family. Today I'm being joined by Heidi from our customer care department. Welcome Heidi. Thank you Gary for having me. Yeah I appreciate you coming and sharing some great tips and tricks. So really the first step with your water filtration, whether it's your cottage or cabin or at your home, is knowing what concerns you and your family about your water. Once you know that, then the next step is having your water tested to find out uh, what's actually in that water that's causing that grief for you. Now you can either have it tested at a local lab or you can send us a water sample, right? Yeah. And what do we do with that sample? So we test it here on site and th with that we can give you a more accurate recommendation for exactly the system that would take care of would those take concerns. Care of your concerns. And that test is totally free. And if you're not sure where to send that address, just mail to Water Store, 1004 King Street, Midland, Ontario, L4R 0B8. Now I definitely encourage you to watch this video to the end because throughout we'll be talking about all different aspects of cottage and cabin water filtration. Everything from water softeners, iron and sulfur filters, tannin filters, ultraviolet disinfection systems, reverse osmosis, and a whole lot more. Heidi, generally, what should people be looking for when they're thinking about water filtration for their cottage? You should be looking for, um, you know, if it's non-proprietary, um, where it's made. Is it made in North America? The ease of installation and maintenance is something you definitely want to look for because you want to make sure that you can maintain it and, you know, fix it if, if you have issues or, you know, questions. Yeah, that's right. And you want to make sure that it's something that you can get a manual for, that there's YouTube videos for to kind of help yes. you out through the whole process. And that it's easy to install, especially for cottage and cabin owners. Absolutely. You know, a lot of them don't have a plumber, you know, within the next block or within the next mile. Sometimes they're an hour or two hours away, so they have to be self-sufficient. So knowing how to install and how to maintain it yourself becomes super important. So let's, the first thing we're going to talk about is a spin down filter. A spin down filter is a coarse filter. Um, it's when you have a lot of um, sand and debris coming in uh, to your from your uh, well or um, lake, of yeah. course. Or yeah, they're very common on the lake. So a lot of times people will even have a UV system or anything, and they'll say, "I still have to change my filters." Very often because I have a lot of sediment. And usually we would recommend something like this. Um, it is a great option. It has um, different microns at 60, 100, or 250. So normally it sits close like this. So basically how this works, you can uh, probably just barely see the arrows, but water flows in through this side, and then it flows through the filter. Dirt accumulates on the filter, and then it continues on. But every once in a while, like usually about once a week or so, mm -hmm. you need to open this up. And what happens is it creates a centrifugal force. You put a bucket underneath here, and it flushes down. So it's relatively inexpensive, um, although, like I say, there's some participation on your <laughs> part to make sure that you keep this thing clean. But uh, but like I say, for a, l a lot of folks, especially on lake water, yeah. it's a good way to do, do the heavy lifting, put it mm -hmm. that way, you know. But like I say, you have to be prepared to, to look after it. Heidi, what's the next thing we can look at for uh, water filtration? Usually a, a dual grade filter in um, a filter housing like this. So this would be your first stage um, right after the tank. The pressure tank, yeah. So something like this, we usually recommend uh, 50 to 5 micron or 75 to 25 micron, which is dual grade filters, which means the outside starts on the bigger grade. So if it's 50 to 5, it's 50 on the outside, and then the inside goes to 5 micron. So it still will bring you down to that 5 micron, which a lot of uh, systems require, but it will also help you with the bigger stuff too. Yeah, and, and it won't get clogged so quickly if you just had a 5 micron single grade um, filter in there. And a lot of people say even the bigger ones, like this one, so this one's 20 inch and it's um, four and a half wide. So th we also do a 20 inch, 10 and a half wide. So most people prefer the wide ones because they have to change them less. They take more and they, they just, they work better. They take more out. 
Yeah, so one of the advantages of this kind of a filter as opposed to the spin down filter is that you can put different uh, grades of filters in here. Like Heidi said, you can do the dual gradient filter, but you don't have to manually go in there and open it up all the mm -hmm. time. Um, one of the disadvantages of this kind of a system is that once the filter is dirty, you can't clean it out. You have to just toss it out and uh, put it in a replacement filter. These are the ones uh, that we have. We get them from V-Club, but they, <laughs> they have a drain plug at the bottom. So I like those because you can open up that drain plug, drain the water out of this before you change the filter. It makes it a whole lot lighter and a whole lot easier to handle, especially for old guys like me. So what's wrong with using a filter housing like this? Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it will obviously the size difference, right? So it's gonna clog up quicker. Um, so again, this is why everything really depends on your water, right? How much sediment you have. Um, and how much water you use. And how much water you use, right? So if, you know, if there's a lot of people in the house, there's a lot of water usage, usually we would suggest something probably bigger. And uh, again, those are available, like Heidi says, in 20 inch length, 10 inch length, four and a half inch in diameter or two and a half inch in diameter in both lengths. So sometimes you have to do it in stages, right? Yeah. You put a coarse filter on first, then you go with a finer filter mm -hmm. so that uh, the coarse filter does the heavy lifting. Absolutely. And so you have to change the fine filter as often. Now there's different kinds of filters too. So there's, we talked about sediment filters so far, but there's also a carbon filter or um, carbon or a taste and odor filter. Mm -hmm. So why would folks uh, need one of these? Well, I mean, these are great for um, like uh, pesticides, um, stuff like that. It, uh, it's for taste and odor, really. Um, and for herbicides, pesticides. Do you use a carbon by itself? No, I never. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Um, because your carbon will clog up with dirt so quickly that it won't be able to do what the carbon's supposed to do. Yeah, so typically um, you'd have a sediment filter first then a carbon filter, and then it would go to, if you have an ultraviolet light mm -hmm. or something like that, it would go there uh, afterwards. What are the c common questions we get about uh, water filters? Um, common questions are... Uh, like cartridge type filters. Uh, I, which, which one do I need? Which one do you need? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's right. And uh, uh, what else do people uh, have concerns about with, cottage, with um, those filters? They usually ask us what order they go in, to be honest. Yeah, yep, that's that, very that's common. That's an important thing. Yep. And another thing we get questions about is sometimes they can't get the filter housings open. Yep. You know, and so it's important that you shut off the water before, mm -hmm. you open up a faucet to release all the pressure. Yep. And then you can open it because if it's under full pressure, you'll never be able to open That's it. That's true. We and also get, uh, you know, why is my uh, filter housing leaking? Usually it has something to do with the O-ring, to be honest with you. And yeah. uh, we always recommend that people um, have uh, silicone grade food, uh, food uh, silicone grease on hand because it's great. You always uh, use it every time you change something. And uh, we obviously sell it here. As for our online store, we have uh, smaller packets and we also have a full tube, but you only need a little bit and it's great to have. You, It's definitely a must have. Yeah, so, so the, the advantage of the silicone grease is it makes a better seal, so you don't have to tighten it quite as much. And when it comes time to loosen it the next time to, re to replace that filter, it makes it a whole lot easier uh, to do that. Some of the, the videos that we have, we have a great video that shows you how to unstuck a, a filter housing. So if you're struggling with that, we can definitely help you with that. And um, um, or, you know, if it's leaking, again, we got a great uh, video that'll help you with that. So you really need to think about um, what you want to accomplish with the filter, Absolutely. right? To decide which one you, you need. Mm -hmm. And uh, if folks aren't sure which kind of filter they need, what, what are some of the steps they can do to help us help them figure out what they need? Um, well, I mean, if you already have a system and, you know, you're unaware of what it is, send us a picture um, to our email. We're happy to help. We're happy to dig for you and look for you and find out what filters you need. Um, also, I mean, you can always take out the filter and take a picture of the filter and send it to us that way. Um, we're, we're here to help. That's what we're here to do. We talked about carbon filters a little bit earlier, but, um, but there's more than one type of carbon filter. And again, I got a great video that talks about the different kinds to help you uh, make the best uh, selection uh, for your family. So what are some ownership tips when people have cartridge type filters? Well, I mean, you definitely have to make sure you change them annually or um, if it's before uh, the year mark, you would notice a, like a loss in your pressure maybe or a low flow. That's always a telltale sign to change your filters. Um, trust me, remember uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Also, like we said just before, silicone grease on the O-rings makes things a lot easier. 
And yeah, make sure to turn off your water before changing any filters and depressurizing. So let's talk about it automatic backwashing filter. What do those things do? They will get rid of the really big stuff. So basically when, you know, these filter systems aren't doing the heavy lifting, you're gonna have to go to a backwashable um, automatic filter. So there's different kinds. How they work is they're definitely plug and play. They work automatically. There's no filters to change, which is great. And the life expectancy is way much longer than if you're just changing a filter, like um, out of just a filter housing. Yeah, so they look something like this here. Now mm -hmm. this is an iron filter, but it basically looks like this. It's just a little bit shorter. It has three buttons on the controller here. But as Heidi says, the water just flows through, it accumulates inside here, and then it backwashes every five days and clean it out and then go from there. So of course the big benefit is you don't have to change filters. You don't have to uh, spin down, open up that spin down mm -hmm. filter. You don't have to do any of that kind of That's stuff. Really it just does it automatically. And uh, these things last 10, 12, 15 years before they need any maintenance whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's really a, a big convenience thing. And when we run into situations where folks already have some filter but they say, oh, we're constantly changing mm -hmm. the filters. This is the go-to, yeah. you know, that we recommend to, to go to that. So as Heidi says, they're available in different configurations. So for um, lake or well water, when you have a lot of dirt, you'd go with an automatic backwashing neck sand filter. There's also another one to neutralize acidic water. So that's raising the pH. Yeah, that's exactly right. So if your water's low in pH, mm -hmm. 6.0, and often in lake water, the, the, the pH is lower than it is in well water, municipal water. Yeah. So if your pH gets around 6.0, that kind of thing, you might have a fair amount of corrosion on mm -hmm. your plumbing or on your fixtures, etc. And uh, by neutralizing with a calcite filter, you won't have that concern. So again, if you're looking for more information about uh, about those systems, I've got a great YouTube video that explains it all. And again, there's a link in the description down below. So can people maintain one of these themselves? Absolutely. There's really no maintenance uh, <laughs> at all. Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of these systems. Yeah. There's no maintenance. So eventually the day will come where you, the media will have to be replaced. But like I say, you're talking 12, 15, or even 20 years. And again, if you're not sure um, where to uh, get more information about this, you can go to our websites, watereastore.com in the US, watereastore.ca in Canada, Canada, and we offer free shipping and discount price. By the way, this is a, a tip for everyone, whether you're on well water or lake water, or city water, or your home or whatever. When you're away from your property, shut your water off. You've got a ball valve somewhere there, shut it off. It's super, super cheap insurance. If something were to split, a pipe were to split or something like that, you'd have a disaster that you yeah. would come home to. So I always encourage you to shut off the water, whether you've got a water softener there, a tannin filter, an mm -hmm. iron filter, whatever, shut it off and then when you come back, turn it back on and then regenerate each piece of equipment individually. Wait till that regeneration finishes and then go to the next piece of equipment. It'll make the equipment last a lot longer and uh, you'll avoid the insurance folks and having to deal with all that. So how can you get rid of tannins? Well, you'd have to get a tannin filter, which again, looks like this. Yeah, it looks like this a little mm -hmm. bit uh, shorter. So a tannin filter looks like a water softener. It works like a water softener, uses salt like a yep. water softener but it actually uses more salt than a water softener does, mm -hmm. and it uses water softener salt. So common questions we get about tannin filters, will it clean up damage previously done by tannins? Yes. Yeah, it will. It will. It will. You're still gonna have to clean it up and scrub it. Yes. Um, but it'll, it'll clean it up and it'll prevent it from happening in the future. In the future, absolutely. Can someone install one themselves? Uh, yes, uh, yes they can, yeah. very easily. And it installs exactly like a water softener. So again, if you're hiring a plumber to do the installation, if he's ever installed a water softener, he can install a tannin filter. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of salt does a tannin filter use? So it does use the same salt as a water softener. The tannin filter typically uses about three bags of salt a month, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is more than the average water softener mm -hmm. uses. So what kind of things should you look for when investing in a tannin filter? So you would want um, non-proprietary, again, so you can make sure that parts and manuals, stuff like that are readily available. Um, where is it made? Uh, is it, you know, this is made in North America. Uh, is it metered? These are metered. So how yeah. a tannin filter works, it meters, it gives you like a one cubic foot gives you 500 gallons of capacity or every three days, whichever comes first. So it's important to get the right size. Absolutely. Again, you don't want to oversize. No, no, that that's right. And uh, and again, what about big box stores? Um, you, you don't want to go there um, <laughs> again because it's, um, like I said, you know, we're, 
we're here for you um, every step of the way from testing your water to everything and when you know if you have questions or concerns or you know any you need anything after we're we always answer the phone we always answer the emails well big box stores the problem is you, you won't find anyone there that's going to help you they, they won't know how to troubleshoot they won't know and you can't get parts they'll give you an 800 number if you don't get anywhere that way and you're still having problems with it and still under warranty they'll tell you to bring it back well that doesn't work very well because you have to disconnect it etc um, the other problem is that whenever I run into tannin filters or iron filters at big box stores are always very old very inefficient technology so it's uh, definitely something that I encourage you uh, to avoid so one important thing that you need to do with a tannin filter is you need to add a carbon filter after it because you'll get a fishy <laughs> smell because we're oh. removing organics from the water okay oh, you'll right. often get like a fishy smell so because of that you should have a carbon filter after it so that that uh, carbon filter will get rid of that fishy smell in addition to getting rid of the herbicides pesticides so one of the other uh, side effects of having a tannin filter is that it lowers the pH of your water so that's one thing you need to be uh, aware of if your pH was already fairly low then you may need to add a calcite filter after it to raise that pH back up. Otherwise you might get some corrosion on your plumbing. So what's a reverse osmosis drinking water system? Hey, what's it do for people? Well, it gives you reverse osmosis drinking water right in your own house. And what's the advantage of that? Well, you don't have to go and fill up those eight jugs every week at the, you know, water store. But why would you <laughs> want reverse osmosis drinking water? Because it just tastes so great. Yeah. So reverse osmosis process lowers the mineral content by 90% in your water. So what that's doing is getting rid of the sodium and uh, a lot of the minerals in that in the water, but it also gets rid of things like pharmaceuticals and personal care right. products that we start to hear more about. It reduces things like sodium content and those other things uh, from the water. So it does a great job of cleaning up your water. Now it doesn't reduce it by 100%, it reduces it by 90%. So there's still some minerals definitely left in your water. So um, what else does it remove? from your water um, well it's a, a secondary a second uh, barrier against bacteria for drinking water yeah absolutely so for so um, for wells or for lake water you know we're not you're not on a chlorinated water source mm -hmm. it uh, it gives you that um, but it also removes chemicals from your water yes it removes uh, chlorine chemicals um, also fluoride and chloramines however if you have chloramines it's a, a different filter um, yeah, we yes. have a, a different um, reverse osmosis system that removes, um, um, chloramines. that's specifically yeah. made for removing chloramines from your water, it has better filters for removing the chloramines, and, uh, and that's uh, what, it, what it's all about. And uh, so one of the advantages, of course, of having a reverse osmosis system is it eliminates those single-use uh, water bottles and, of course, the, the, the environmental impact of uh, what happens to those uh, uh, water bottles. And, um, yeah, definitely. Usually, when people are telling me they're bringing cases of water bottles to the cottage, those that's well, you need the reverse osmosis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and does reverse osmosis remove tannins? Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. It removes tannins. It sure does. So again, if you've got a, a tannins in your water, but you don't really want to go to the expense or the complexity mm -hmm. of going with a whole cottage or whole cabin tannin removal system, you can go with a, a reverse osmosis system. Just remove the tannins from that from one your tap. Drinking water. Yeah, for your drinking mm -hmm. water, and uh, and that will uh, really clean it up. So, are there different types of reverse osmosis systems? Yes. Yeah. There's a high efficiency and uh, there's a remineralization which means it raises the ph so it um, use, makes it like alkaline water um, and there's many different stages two to ten so there's two stage three stage four stage five stage yeah so, <laughs> so the sweet spot is five stages yes. so usually when it gets higher than five stages yeah you go to a six stage where it has the remineralization mm -hmm. stage but when you see these ones out there for eight or nine stages and that yeah. kind of thing it, it's just an excuse for them to charge you more money mm -hmm. and, uh, and and it really doesn't do anything extra the two stage and three stage ones they just don't have enough filters to properly protect the membrane within the system. So it's gonna cost you a whole lot more for maintenance for those ones. So uh, that's definitely something that you, you should consider. Now the system that uh, we recommend is the Hume um, Water Saver 75. That's the one I was just holding up there a minute ago, this one mm -hmm. here. And uh, the big benefit of this one, of course, is that it's a high efficiency system. So there's very little water that goes to the drain, um, but it, um, it also gives you high flow. So mm -hmm. it, it takes a very short period of time to, you can fill a 12 ounce glass in about five seconds. Um, so it, it gives you that high flow uh, capacity. 
And uh, so what are some common questions folks ask us about reverse osmosis systems? Um, can I install it to my fridge? Yeah, and that's absolutely, right. And yes, you can. Um, it's very simple. You just need a little bit of extra tubing and uh, a connector T. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's about it. And of course, we have all that here. Um, if you order one and you would like it connected to your fridge, you can just write that in the notes and we can help you out with that. Um, also, can I install it myself? And uh, yes, absolutely you can. It uh, does come out of the box just like that. So there, everything's all ready to go. The reverse osmosis does come with all the filters um, already inside the can, the housings and everything. So they're very easy to install, yes. Yeah, and they come pre-assembled. Yes. Yeah, so um, again, if you're looking for information on how a reverse osmosis system actually works, I've got a great YouTube in, uh, video in the description down below. I've got a link there that you can uh, definitely check that out. And uh, so we often hear of some whoops, some myths and misconceptions about reverse osmosis systems. And I did a whole video about that topic. You know, you get most of the minerals in your diet. In fact, 95% of the minerals that you need in your diet from your food, not from your water. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you know, that's often a, a misconception, but there's a whole pile more. So I did a whole uh, live stream on that. And again, I got a, a link in the description down below. I definitely encourage you to check that out if you're at all uh, skeptical about reverse osmosis water. So again, what are some buying tips when getting a reverse osmosis uh, drinking water system for your cottage or cabin, Heidi? Well, um, uh, you know, uh, where is it made, obviously. Um, ours are made in North America. Um, all of our reverse osmosis use um, the UK brand John Guest parts with their quick, the, the quick necks. Yeah, the fittings. They're fairly easy, to, very easy to use. So one of the big advantages of getting made in North America reverse osmosis systems, and again, we tried the Chinese ones 10, 12 years ago, is the build quality. You have to remember, this is water that's being contained in your home. And, uh, and you know, there, there have been some concerns with those uh, made in China, um, um, reverse osmosis drinking water systems cracking or even bursting and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why we definitely recommend the higher quality of the made in North America systems. Also, you want to make sure um, the tubing size is uh, 3 8 because um, if it's smaller than that, you would be quite surprised on how little of a flow you will get. So the tubing size definitely uh, matters and ours come with 3 8 tubing. Yeah, so what Heidi's talking flow. about is, yeah, so ours have the 3 8 inch tubing from the last uh, filter to the tank to the faucet. So that gives you a lot more flow out of that 3 8 inch tubing than the smaller quarter inch mm -hmm. tubing that you find on those systems that you see on Amazon. Yeah. And uh, to, and usually the big box stores, when they sell reverse osmosis systems, they usually don't last very long. Well, they don't last very long. And again, the parts. You can't find parts. You can't get customer service. You, uh, you good luck changing them. They, they won't help you there either. And you know, it's, yeah, it's usually quite a headache. Yeah, and it's always a good idea to look for the high efficiency models because with the high efficiency reverse osmosis systems, again, there's a whole lot of waste water going to the drain. And, Way uh, less waste. Yeah, and so because of that, it's a definitely a much more efficient system and uh, definitely uh, works out well. So what are some ownership tips when you get a reverse osmosis system? Well, the filters you have to change once a year. Yeah. Um, so ours, uh, our reverse osmosis is a five stage. So that means you would change four filters, the four stages, uh, once a year. The membrane only has to be changed every five to seven years. Yeah, now talking about filters, one thing we didn't mention when we were talking about um, uh, buyer's guide, yeah. it's important to get reverse osmosis system with non-proprietary filters. Yes. Because we see that happen so, so many often. times. Folks get them with the proprietary ones and then they find out that first of all, the proprietary ones are so expensive because mm -hmm. you can only get them from them. They can charge whatever they want. Yeah. But secondly, um, if the design changes in five or six years, you can't get them anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now you literally have to toss out the system and get yeah. a new system. Uh, because of that. Can you connect it to your fridge if it has an ice maker or uh, the water, you know, at the front? Absolutely, you can do both. Yeah, and... Yeah. Uh, and, and it makes great ice. And in the winter time, if you have a portable humidifier in your in your home, you can actually fill that up with reverse osmosis water. That's what we do in our house. And again, it prevents that scale buildup from being inside that and keeps the that humidifier uh, super clean so you don't have to keep cleaning it all the well, time. Well even those air purifiers that everyone's using uh, lately, uh, you, uh, the reverse osmosis water is great for that as well. You put water in air purifiers? Yeah, the little ones. 
Really, eh? Yeah. The ones where you could put those oils in. When it comes to uh, getting reverse osmosis uh, filters, a uh, question we're often asked is, which one do I need for my system? And uh, so again, I've got a great YouTube video that kind of breaks it all down and shows you what you can look for. But if you're not sure, you've watched the video, you're still not sure what you need, send us a picture. Mm -hmm. Often from a picture, then uh, we can figure out for you um, which uh, filters you need. And as we mentioned earlier, I've got some great YouTube videos that show you exactly how to do the, the, the maintenance yourself, save you some money and uh, also some convenience. And uh, so I definitely encourage you to check that out. So we've mentioned a few times about ultraviolet disinfection. And uh, so Heidi, what does ultraviolet disinfection do for families that uh, have cottages or cabins? Well, it makes your water potable and safe to consume. <laughs> Is uh, I guess the, the generalization. Um, it's a non-chemical disinfection. Yeah. And uh, it uh, doesn't change any char characteristic of your water. So does it soften it? No. Does it remove iron? No. Does it remove tannins? No. Okay. <laughs> but it will keep you bacteria free. Um, so it, it removes things like E. coli. Um, coliform. E coliform. Um, all the, the bad things, really. Yeah. And... Uh, and can you use it on lake water and well water? Absolutely. Yes, you can. Yeah, sure you can. When it comes to cottages or cabins, what what's one th reason why people would consider getting ultraviolet light instead of not having one? Well, because they want to make sure that they're safe. Like I said, it's it's creating potable, safe water. So, in, like, you'll be able to open your mouth when you have a shower and brush your teeth and know that you're not getting, you know, a pesticide or, you know, something uh, that's harmful. A bacteria. Bacteria, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But the other thing is, you know, we recently did a cottage show and uh, the number one question at our booth was, what can I get so I don't have to carry water to the cottage yeah. or to the cabin? To make it potable, yeah. Yeah, especially if you're on a water access cottage, mm -hmm. you know, you have to fill up these big five gallon jugs, which weigh about 40 pounds. Then you have to put them in your car, take them to your boat, take them across to your cottage, take them, lift them out, carry them out, carry them up the the stairs, who knows, you're 40, 50, 60 stairs. Doesn't sound uh, fun. For, for your drinking water. And you know you're going to run out the most inopportune time. <laughs> right. So because of that ultraviolet disinfection, we'll give you that potable mm -hmm. water for your family. So what types of uh, ultraviolet disinfection systems are there? So there's a whole house um, ultraviolet disinfection system. Um, there's one that you can attach to an RO drinking system. And there's also a mini racker standalone. So how does uh, ultraviolet disinfection work? The ultraviolet light that goes, um, that is basically, it's the light, the UV light that kills the bacteria. Yeah, so water passes across the, it, the UV light and as it passes by, it kills the bacteria. Are there things we have to do before the water gets to the ultraviolet light to make sure the ultraviolet light's gonna work? Um, well, yes, you need to have uh, a sediment filter. Yeah, because you need to make sure there's not a particle of dirt mm -hmm. that's bigger than the bacteria so that as the particle of dirt is going by the light, it, sh it shields the bacteria, the bacteria is in the shadow of yeah. it, and then it would get through and infect your, your plumbing, right? Yeah. Can people install them themselves? Yes, these are quite easy to install themselves. Um, when you order it from us, it comes right on the manifold, already assembled. You just have to put the filters in, then plumb it in, turn on your water, and yeah, it's there's fairly straightforward to install and to maintain which and is what great. kind of filters are they um, so there's you um, you have a sediment filter and a carbon filter yeah and if you want a UV light uh, just for your drinking water yeah you can also get that yeah so we have this one here this is an LED um, UV light and one of the uh, cool things about it is it has a flow meter inside so when it senses water flow like this would be connected up to one faucet at the kitchen sink so when it senses water flow it turns on, mm -hmm. it disinfects the water, then when the water flow is turned off, it stays on for 10 seconds to disinfect the what's inside here, and then it shuts itself off. Now, this only works, this is not for, you don't just put this in, you have to have some kind of pre-filtration before. We suggest a reverse osmosis drinking water system to make sure wa your water is super clear before it goes through this. And how do you know how to size a uh, ultraviolet disinfection system? Well, it depends on um, how many people are in your house, or cottage, house, or cabin. Um, it depends on how many washrooms you have, how many things that you have that use water, right? You know, do you have dishwashers? Do you have washing machines? 
you know, all that um, basically will depend on the size that you need. Exactly. So it depends on flow rate. Mm -hmm. So uh, the amount of gallons per minute that you pass through the ultraviolet light. So if, if you have like one or two bathrooms, you can get by with a six gallon per minute um, ultraviolet disinfection system. If you have two to three bathrooms, then you're looking at a 10 gallon per minute system. Because if you ran everything at once, you wouldn't exceed 10 gallons per minute. That's how you size the ultraviolet mm -hmm. disinfection. And if you're looking for a whole house system where you've got three or four bathrooms, washing machine, all that other jazz, you might be looking at 13 gallons per mm -hmm. minute. So again, um, we can help you uh, do those calculations, um, you know, and uh, all you need to do is send us an email at uh, info at watereastdoor.com, whether you're in Canada or the US, and then from there we can help you size the correct system for uh, you and your family at your cottage. So what kind of things should you be looking for when considering purchasing an ultraviolet disinfection system? Well, where is it made? Um, uh, is it made in North America? So with UV systems more than anything else, it's really important to get the, the made in uh, North America. We get emails all the time from folks that have these weird um, Chinese systems that they bought somewhere. Brands and the I've never heard of. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because what happens is they buy a, 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 a con two or three container loads of them, they send them over here. But the problem with the, with every UV system is the lamp needs to be replaced typically yeah. every year. So what happens two or three years down the road, well, those lamps aren't available anymore. The UVs aren't available anymore. So now you just have to throw, the, throw away the whole thing. So you wanna make sure you're investing in a system that's made in North America where the replacement UV lamps. Now we, we deal with several different uh, companies that have ultraviolet disinfection systems and they've all been in the business for a long time. So you can easily get, uh, and they will be in business for a long time. So you can easily get the replacement uh, UV lamps. And uh, that's very uh, important. And uh, what about big box stores? Um, big box stores, um they, uh, yeah, I, I, they're not good to go to because, yeah, you know, it's one person taking your order, one person doing this, uh, you know, it's not all, unfortunately, you know, it's not everyone the same. I, I, there's no expertise. There's no there. expertise. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the problem with uh, big there's box no stores. One -on -one. They deal with so many different uh, products and things like that. It's not their fault. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just not specialists in that. But one of the things that I've noticed is uh, quite often, uh, you know, they have these little UVs on sale for like 399 or, or some number like that while well, they're so small they're like four gallons per minute flow rate yeah. they would be good for one faucet <laughs> but often folks buy them and then put them on their whole cottage or cabin and you're constantly running more water through them than they can handle so now it's worse than not even having a uv because At now all. you got a false sense of security right mm -hmm. and uh and then it uh, just doesn't work. In terms of once you've uh, invested in ultraviolet disinfection system, what, what are some of the things um, your ownership is gonna be like? What are some ownership tips? Well, I mean, the first tip is uh, the lamp needs to be changed every 365 days. So um, it's it's not every year because for cottagers or you know cabin people, if you're not there in the whole year and you shut your water off. You and mean at the end of the at season? At the end of the season, thank you. Um, then your lamp will still last the 365 days. Of use. Of use. Um, however, on that note, um, just be weary because a lot of people, when you order lamps um, from Amazon, if they're not specifically that brand, they usually don't guarantee your warranty. Well, no, <laughs> they, they, yeah, so so you're right. On Amazon, there's some of the Chinese-made um, UV lamps. So all of the systems that we handle, um, you know, the, the Viqua, the Luminor, the um, UV Dynamics, UV Dynamics the, our Hume brand, yeah. the, all the lamps are made in North America. They're made in the U.S. actually. And, uh, and, and they're real quality lamps. They'll last 12 months, no problem. Whereas if you find some of those cheap ones on Amazon, the Chinese ones that are like, Half the price. <laughs> Half the price, that kind of for thing. For a reason. Those ones, yeah, you'll be lucky if they make it for a year, but the bigger issue is that is that they'll, they'll really tax the, the ballast, the controller of the system, yeah. and you may need to replace that a whole lot more often. And those controllers are several hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, something you need to consider. The other thing you need to consider is when you install a UV, you, what has to be done? You have to disinfect all of your plumbing before you install it, while you're installing, because people uh, forget sometimes bacteria is actually a moving organism, so it will move <laughs> um, if you don't disinfect prior. Yeah, exactly. 
exactly. Just installing a UV system doesn't make all your water bacteria free. You have to install it, you have to run chlorine throughout your whole household, let it sit in there for four hours, then flush out that, uh, that chlorine in the water, and then you're good to go. So you're making a fresh start. That's uh, very important. Bundles, what are UV bundles, Heidi? Well, bundles are great because you get exactly what you need for the UV. So we sell um, bundles for all of our UV systems. Um, so it will come with, we have different bundles. We have just Oops. the filter bundles, but we also have bundles that come with the filters and the lamp. We also have bundles that will come with the filters, lamp and sleeve. Now the sleeve, um, if you can clean your sleeve properly to, you know, absolute clearness, every time and it's not cracked or chipped you are okay and you can use that sleeve again however you have to keep in mind that the sleeve is what's shining the light through so if you can't completely see through that sleeve you need to replace it yeah exactly and so what Heidi's alluding to is the bundles so so this is a, a bundle here for a Viqua IHS 12 v 4 mm -hmm. and uh, so before we had these bundles you had to figure out which filter you needed and you had to fill out which lamp you needed and with Viqua they probably got a hundred different ones yeah. and you have to figure out which carbon filter you need. So we make it easy for you. If you go to our websites, um, you, you just um, search for... You type uh, in the system you have and it will yeah. come up. Viqua IHS 12D4, in this particular case, these all come up. Mm -hmm. And because we sell them as a bundle, we offer free shipping, but in addition to that, it's much cheaper to buy them this way yeah. than it would be if you bought each one of these separately. Absolutely. And uh, and that's why the bundles are so popular. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes, takes away the guesswork um, to make sure you get the right stuff and it um, saves you money. So, um, and, and you're getting the OEM product. So these are the exact OEM product. So you know that you can trust it. It's the same, um, same as, as the company that manufactured the system in the first place. So what are some of the questions that we get asked uh, Heidi about these uh, combo packs? Um, well, uh, you know, can, can I, um, you know, how do I change it? <laughs> That's very common. Um, so uh, again, you have a lot of great YouTube videos that, and I mean, if you uh, have trouble, you can always, you know, some people just tell us, this is my first time changing it, and we're happy to send you the YouTube link right to that exact uh, YouTube video and on, on that system, and it will show you step-by-step step on how to do it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people also ask, you know, what if I forget? Can I get it, you know, sent to me every year? Yes, you can. We have an auto subscription sign up so that you can take the, the guesswork out of it. So every year um, it will like, uh, it will, it's a subscription. So every year it will uh, automatically, automatically send, it. send it out to you. Yes. Thank yeah, you. That's right. So. And, and you can see here, we have videos that show you how to do the, the maintenance. So this is the video on the Viqua IHS 12D4. And again, there's links in the description down below. So you can uh, definitely uh, check that out. And, um, and so the important thing to look for when you're thinking about uh, getting these, uh, these bundles is, is it an OEM system? Is it, the, is it the right system for my exact model number? And, uh, and that's a complete kit. And of course, you need to make sure there's a video or something that'll coach you on how to do it. Definitely. And uh, the comments we get on our video all the time are, you know, folks feel like a hero because <laughs> they've, uh, they've done the work themselves, they've replaced it, they've saved the money um, by doing it themselves. So one tip I'd like to give everyone, and especially uh, relevant to um, UV systems, uh, but also applies to any of your water filtration equipment, get a surge suppressor. You know, one of those power bars <laughs> that, um, that will suppress the electrical surges because in cottage or cottage country or in cabins and that there's often power um, surges there's often power outages and things yeah. like that and uh, these power bars or these surge suppressors sorry um, will make them last a lot longer they're cheap insurance you can often get them for 20 25 dollars whether you get them on amazon or buy them from your local hardware store i definitely encourage those and if you're looking for more information about the water filtration products discussed in this video you can go to our websites watereastdoor.ca in canada watereastdoor.com in the u.s we offer free shipping and discount price and i've included links in the description below that will take you to getting more information about these products including the automatic backwashing filters and everything else discussed in this video. Click here for your next video on lake water filtration and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments add them down below.